Get your thank you on. <laughs> Who we thanking? <laughs> Everybody. Is anybody? Yo, thank Ock at the corner store for letting me slide that time I was short. Oh, man, I appreciate that. I could never turn my back on Maul. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, Bow Wow. Do we get thank don't you tracks in hip-hop anymore? Don't follow these dopes. Is that still like a thing? We don't we don't get thank you tracks in hip hop anymore, do we? No. They don't we don't even have the C D uh little pocket thing where you, they could thank the execs that no one knew. Yeah, but it's like I, I feel like artists should still have a thank you track though, like It's IG captions. IG captions now. Yo, yeah. thank you for the support. Buy my t shirt now. Yeah, the IG <laughs> Buy my bundle. The IG buy is definitely my bundle. The, the IG is definitely the thank you uh mm. credits and all of that now. Only thanking when you have something to purchase, I would say. Yeah. But no, Bow Wow was, he was leading the way. He let him know. I was, I was a kid and I was following the dopes mm-hmm. until Bow Wow said that. And then I was like, damn, I didn't even think of it that way. Yeah. I shouldn't follow these dopes. It's interesting to watch uh, like uh, performers and entertainers that were kids, like where they are now as adults. Yeah. Like you forget how much shit, like in seeing Bow Wow now on, on like Instagram, you forget how much shit he did as a kid. I, like, is there any real, like, uninterrupted and bullshit in their career of a child star that didn't either have terrible, embarrassing moments, got addicted to drugs? Who is the quintessential kid that, like, is the standard that made it? Every child, hmm. actor, musician, reality star, mm-hmm. always ends up fucked up in some, some capacity. You know Patrick Harris? I wouldn't say he made it squeaky clean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know about that one. Yeah, yeah no, nah, not squeaky clean, but um, yeah, that's interesting. I wonder why that is, though. Why is it? And it seems like it's only in, um, well, no, I was about to say our culture, but I know some. No, uh, no. I know some. Uh, the Hollywood whites get to it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. Lindsay, Tara, Tara Reed. Yeah. Listen, Lindsay Lohan was going crazy on the LIE. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it never works out that way, but I guess. If I, I had all that's that just money, pressure. yeah, and I'm at parties, like, yeah, yeah, all that pressure from being young and trying to trying to live up to those standards when you were such an innocent child, and now you're not allowed to make any mistakes as an adult. Actually, does Tiana Taylor count? I wouldn't say she was a child star per se. Oh, um, we saw Tiana when she was a, she a, was young. She was she was pretty young. Tiana might have she was in the public eye since she was about maybe 15. Yeah, my super sweet 16. Yeah, so she um. Yeah, she might be one of the ones that that made it and doesn't have any crazy headlines and and any incidents uh on the internet. That's kind of crazy. Yeah, T T might be the only one. Well, definitely that I could think of. That was a sick time at MTV when My Super Sweet Sixteen was on, and then the following show after that was Sixteen and Pregnant. How do you think the Sixteen Weird and times. Pregnant girls felt like yeah, they're was- leading? Like damn. <laughs> Who was the programming director over there at the time? Like, how did they how did they program those shows? Like, let's find all the privileged kids we can, and then let's find the kids that didn't pull out. Okay. Yeah, we but, need to, we need to, we need. To, I want to sit down with that programming director. I want to know what was going on in, in the meeting where they was like, "Nah, put this right after sixteen and pregnant, right after uh my super sweet 16. Let's let's put things in perspective again for these these young uh yeah teen mothers. Weird <laughs> weird times over there. Uh, you stood me up for the uh, Tiana Taylor show. No, nah, it wasn't a it wasn't a stand up thing. It was um, you know, didn't have uh the proper credentials and then by the time I thought about going home to get it and it would have it would have been Do you know what it was like to stand in in line at a Tiana show by yourself? You didn't stand up. Everyone, See, everyone cut, asking first Are you here it, by yourself? <laughs> Where's your date? First of all, cut it out. I'm like, you, Oh, he's you, on the way, I promise. <laughs> yo, you first of all, you did not stand in no line. No yes, one, I did. You didn't stand in no fucking line. I'm one of line. the people. You didn't stand in no line. You walked right to the front like I did. You gave him your name. And I've seen you at TSA. So I know how you get at Tiana. <laughs> when it comes to lines, I know how you get. You don't do lines. There is no clear at, at Terminal 5. <laughs> no, there's, there's a clear right there. You know you know who to look for. The girl with the thing in her ear. With the, with, the, with the little thing. You know who to look I'm, for. I, uh, I don't want to make a big deal. But yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm with, I'm with the band. Exactly. That's exactly how you got to do it. You didn't wait no line. But um, yeah, I caught the show uh, last night. Mm. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. Um, not, I do love Terminal 5 as a, as a venue. Yeah. But I feel like that show deserved to be in an arena. Yeah, we all know Tiana and how she is with performances. So it's not like I was going in like, damn, I'm shocked that she did this. But I was still blown away, even yeah. with the expectations of knowing what she does. That show was fucking 
Yeah, she uh, she definitely put on a show like she was in an arena last night. Um, she didn't she didn't dumb her show down at all just because it was a smaller venue. Mm. And Terminal and Terminal Five was a nice size venue. Yeah, uh, she might have had about three thousand people in there last night. Yeah, back um, to back sold out shows. Amazing, amazing. She put on Tiana put on an amazing show from start to finish. Um, when her daughter came out to sing, I think I might have been close to the kitchen because mm. there was definitely onions being cut. <laughs> like close by me yeah, I got yeah, like yeah. real misty When yeah. her daughter came out To do a duet Yeah but it's dope Because we, we watched We watched her grow up You know yeah. what I mean Like she's, she's Tiana has documented her And they have she has the reality show And all of that With, with the family So we watched Little Junie grow up, grow up So it was dope To see her on stage And her element She's a star Oh for sure and She's definitely She's she not a shy bone In her body um, But yeah I was just happy For Tiana man Like she put on An amazing show the production, uh, the choreography, of course, we know that's what she does. Um, she's just a visual person, a, a talent. Yeah. Uh, she she gets it. She understands how to put on the show. She understands how to make things look good. Um, and there was a lot of people in there, a lot of her peers that were in there last night that would, they all said the same thing, like, yo, she she put on a, a, a crazy show. Yeah, you went to crazy. the Poppin' show. I went to the one before, like, with just the fans. All you celebrity folks were there, I think. But I would have thought that it would, everybody would have been there over Saturday night. So did I. Yeah. Me going in, looking around for the celebrities, and I couldn't <laughs> find them. <laughs> yo, where the celebs at? <laughs> yo, that's, that's, you, that's some nasty. That's who you, yo, that's crazy. You getting the spots on where the celebs at? Yeah, where's the verified nah, checks that's, at? That's nastiness. That's we got to take cute. photos together and pretend nah, we're that, friends. That's nasty. Share yeah. some followers here. There was a lot of people in there last night, though, man. But um, yeah, shout out to Tiana, uh, her, her entire crew. Uh, her tour is, um, if you didn't get a chance to see her, if, if she's coming to your city, please go see Tiana. I promise you this show was something that you want to see. For sure. And there was a lot of women there. A lot of uh, sexually explicit moves happening on the stage. Yo, it was it was crazy, man, because she did a little segment. She gave uh, she gave Lala and uh, what's the other, the, the girl, Dream Doll? Is that her name? Oh, so you got to go to the show with Lala and Dream Doll? No, I didn't, I didn't go with them. <laughs> let, me, let me make that clear. I don't want to put that out there. Meanwhile, were, meanwhile I'm with uh, WME reps. <laughs> <laughs> no, they were on the stage. She pulled them on the stage to give them a, both a private dance. And um, after she gave them a dance, she asked, uh, she asked the, the, the ladies in the crowd, whose pussy is wet? And like every woman in there, I think some dudes might have. I, I, listen, I may <laughs> have, I may have been said, like, mm. <laughs> yeah, something's wet. <laughs> I, can't, I can't quite figure out yo, what it is. Maybe I pissed myself. Yo, I laugh so hard, man, because it's just it's just funny when you see like a female entertainer control a room full of women, mm -hmm. and like they all want to like sleep fuck with her. her. Yeah, it's just, like all the straight women wanted to fuck. Yeah, yeah, it's the funniest shit in the world, man. But um, she put on a great show. It was a great show last night. She uh, she didn't use a celebrity for our show she just used a, a woman from the crowd mm -hmm. um who i might add was a if i were to assume would be a lack of a better term a, a stud if you will okay some young ma vibes mm -hmm. were on the stage okay and within the segment tiana gets on top of her like four dancers sun held all five of them down yeah <laughs> <laughs> she was prepared yo she was ready yeah I think Tiana met her match. She was a little nervous, I think. Yeah, Dream Doll, Dream Doll was a little nervous. Uh, Lala was a little nervous. Mm. I ain't even want that tea smoke. I don't. I don't want that. Yeah, tea she, smoke. they they didn't want that, man. They didn't. <laughs> they didn't want. They was cool though. You know what I'm saying? Seeing seeing them uncomfortable. That's part of the show. But um, yeah, Tiana put on a great fucking show, man. I'm so proud of her. She did. She did her thing last night. S speaking of that smoke, I did think maybe you stood me up, not only because you didn't have the proper identification or whatever it was. Mm -hmm. Thought maybe you're a little sugar and want to run run into Amon. <laughs> yo, here you go. You Pump fake like, yo, I'm about to go to the show. Like, nah, I forgot my ID. You going to try to push this narrative? I Listen, just want to know. Man, you said you was going to show up somewhere and you didn't show up somewhere. Nah, I showed up. And someone I, had beef with you there. Nah, nobody it's, it's, <laughs> Nobody <laughs> had beef with me. Um, You know, I just couldn't make it sad. I made it Sunday, though. I made sure I was there. Um, I, I posted a video, let, let people know I was in the building. Okay. So I'm not. So you was like. You was letting him know. I was letting I was letting people know Does that he follow me. No, he doesn't follow me. Okay, you think he checks your page though? No, I don't think so, man. Did you put a money bag in the no, video? No, 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 no. I'm not even look. I'm not gonna let you pull me into that because I don't even want it to sound like it's an issue. There's no issue. He felt some type of way about the money bags under one of her posts. Me and T spoke about it, and it was a whole thing because they was you know having a little disagreement, but it's all good. You're you're a backstager. You were in backstage. Did no, you I wasn't. did you go to backstage? Yeah. I went to so I went, went to, I went, went to CT after the show real quick. By yourself? To, 
Uh, Sean yeah. was with me. Okay. Yeah, Sean was with me. Um, just wanted to show her love. Sean was quick. the muscle. No, no Sean. Sean's just my guy. He wasn't the muscle. You I, don't I need muscle at I think a mom can take you and Sean. Yeah, for sure, <laughs> for sure, absolutely. But um, and I think t- if Tiana jumps in, y'all are definitely yeah. Fucked. Nah, but um, it's all love, man. I, I I shout out to Tiana. Shout out to Iman. Uh, it's all love with them. That's family, man. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, after the uh, show, the Soul Train Awards were in New York. It was nice to see that yeah. people were actually in New York this weekend at, at the Apollo. Yes. I thought that was interesting. Yeah. Interesting venue. It was a. Uh, it was very very industry. Over at Last Lap, mm-hmm. the Soul Train Awards came to Last Lap. Really? They should have just shot them in there. At that, that was point. Saturday, right? Saturday night, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Which was cool, but yeah, I look forward to see the Soul Train Awards. I know the AMA happened. Mm-hmm. Doja Cat won Best R and B Artist mm-hmm. over Jasmine Sullivan. Listen, man, it is you know. You know I'm Doja Hive. Yeah, yeah, no, Doja's amazing. She's an amazing artist. I don't want it to seem like we slighting her in the in the least bit. She's an amazing artist, but R and B after the album Jasmine Sullivan just put out. Yeah. Uh, no. I don't bad. need to hear say so. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, they got that one wrong. You and SZA can go to the pop category for that one. <laughs> yeah, and I, and I love I love Doja Cat. I think she's amazing. Um, but if we talk an R&B album, it's very few that had a better R&B album than Jasmine Sullivan. And I think, I hope they get it right with the Soul Train Awards. Because I, I remember Ari had mentioned a co- couple years ago when I think she had gotten slighted on something. And it's like, dog, this is the Soul Train Awards and Shea Butter Baby is not nominated or winning right now it's the soul train awards right save this other shit for the vmas or something like, mm-hmm. if we're gonna call it the soul train awards how about soul music is the winner <laughs> yeah it's 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 so it seems like every year at these award shows we talk about this it's always like they put things in different genres and they call certain things you know r&b pop whatever and it's kind of like or rap and we like mm. that wasn't a rap album or that wasn't an r&b album it's like i don't understand how they are categorizing these uh these artists of these albums, but Doja Cat having a better R and B album than Jasmine Sullivan? No, we shouldn't have an R and B album. But, no. Um, did it air at the AMAs? I just saw a lot if of the did, clips of, of people that it did yesterday. It was all right. Was oh yeah, so now I missed it. Saw Chloe Bailey uh, giving it up. Is that the way that they kind of have to get people to watch award shows now? Because the viewership is so drastically low that it's like, all right, let's make sure the one you want to see twerk is performing. Um, I, they they definitely look at your uh, online impressions. Cause, let's put it this way, and I I know I'm gonna sound like a hater. I'm a big okay. Chloe, I'm a big Chloe Bailey. Uh, I wouldn't say fan, but I I appreciate the Chloe and Haley album. I thought it was good. Mm-hmm. I appreciate uh, you, what you, she does. You recognize on the, her talent. She's yes, talented. Yeah, very much so. Mm-hmm. And a very beautiful girl. Mm-hmm. Even though she still looks way too young for me to find it find her attractive beautiful. like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it. <laughs> that song is not doing shit. Like. That performance is based off of the, let me not say antics, because that's not we, fair. We, we the understand. stuff that's going on yeah. on IG mm-hmm. and how they know she's going to perform is what it is. Because that record, let's be real, and she's too talented for that record. Mm-hmm. Fun records are cool. I get it. Single. I have to do the video. I understand. But that record is really just based around what she's been doing on, on IG. So I don't know <laughs> if that's. Yeah, I'm with you. I, I find it a little weird, you know. Because she is, well, she's of age. She's, she's how old is she, 22? 22 or 23 or something. So, yeah, she's a she's a young woman. Mm. Um, but I just feel like it's been a little too much over-sexualization in the past two years, like online. I think that, you know, it's, it's great. You know, I love women can be sexy. They can do whatever they want. But it's like you said, I think a lot of people only started to recognize her when she started to, you know, post videos online. Mm. Showing her, you know, her body and things like that, which is again, that's her prerogative. But I think that that's that's starting to overshadow the music and overshadow the the art. Yeah, but I mean, is that ever going to change? Because you could say that about so much other. Like you could say that about Lil Nas X and what he does, mm-hmm. and even some of the stunts that rappers do. Like mm-hmm. that is just, I guess, one a tool for women that'll take them. To the views a bit quicker like Chloe Bailey used to fucking post her making beats on yeah. IG and if she was tough and mm-hmm. wouldn't get any traction mm-hmm. obviously we know where it's gonna go with that and if she's embracing her body all for it right amazing but that's just kind of becoming I think the total marketing tool specifically at Atlantic I feel like okay specifically like getting behind that putting all your money into that one big sexual record and video mm-hmm. from Normani down 
Cardi, Meg, everyone. Mm-hmm. That's kind of just become the, the strategy. And the videos come out phenomenal. They right. look great, but the records never really hit like that. Well, that's the thing. I mean, you got to, no matter what, you can Outside be, of WAP, obviously WAP. Yeah. Fucking, but if you're going to, you can be beautiful, sexy, you know, all of these things. But if the music, you know, if the product that you're, you're, you're selling isn't up to par, it really doesn't matter. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, I don't care what stunts the labels try to put together and, oh, you know, Chloe's a grown woman now, you know, let's kind of play into that and her embracing her body, which is great. All of those things are great. But if the music isn't strong and the music isn't connecting to the fan base, all of that is for what? Yeah. Especially when you have artists like her that don't need to rely on it, mm-hmm. where no, others, super where others yeah, may super, have to. Super talented. And Normani too is super talented too and doesn't have to rely on that either. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, that's the world we live in. I'd say, I think it actually says more about society than it does say about the people oh, that are absolutely. doing it. Because look, I mean, of course we're going to click that. Absolutely. Quick. I mean, she looks amazing, but you know, again, if the music isn't there, it's like we're just stuck on that. Listen, and then that's I'm, all we want to see after a while. You know what I mean? I'm a nerd. So like, you know, in like porno categories where they always have like the girls playing video games and then he fucks like that's like the nerd's dream. Mm-hmm. If Chloe Bailey was doing what she was doing and making beats at the same time. Like, be half naked and make beats. That's that's my dream. No. <laughs> <laughs> that would get me going like, damn. Look at look at the titty and the NPC. <laughs> okay. I mean, if that's, listen, I'm not here to I'm not here to step on nobody's <laughs> dreams. If that's your dream, then you know, all, all for it. But um, I get what you're saying. If if it's gonna be that, mix that in with the art, more mm-hmm. of the art. You know, sh- show more of the of the talent. As far as the music and everything, like tie it all in together to it makes sense. I get what you're saying. Um, you know, again, it's embrace your sexuality. You know, embrace sure. your body. Uh, all of those things are are great, but make sure that the music is still highlighted and that the music is still what what is being uh what is being put into the spotlight. Because yeah. again, if you're just walking around looking sexy and attractive and beautiful. You know, that's then we, we're gonna have to start getting into like skincare and beauty products in a minute and get away from the music. You For know real. what I mean? So. You know, she's super talented. Uh, I hope the, the, the label gets it right and they start um, getting music for her, like more for her, Just not just because she's talented and, you know, you think she can find out the type of music she wants to make. For sure. Which I'm sure they're probably already I mean, doing. Beyonce and Parkwood, for yeah. sure. But um, like you said, the music just isn't connecting. I don't know why. Um, I mean, let's give her some time because the last album that she did with her sister, I thought was really good. Mm-hmm. And it was definitely leaning more into... The mature side of the music. content, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I mean, she has one single out. Obviously, they're going around what's going on online. So, let's mm-hmm. see. Who knows? She can give us a fucking seat at the table for all we know, and just this could be the single yeah. to trick us. <laughs> no, I'm I'm waiting because, like I said, I recognize the talent. The talent mm-hmm. is there. I know she's ta- uh, amazing talent. Um, but again, for me, the music just hasn't connected. Um, but I'm I'm still on board though. I'm with you. Um, trying to think what else happened over uh over the weekend. As far as anything else, but did you watch the uh, King Richard? I did. Fill King Richard, absolutely a great movie. Very, inspir- very inspirational. Um, you almost I, and one thing I do like about the movie is that they highlighted Venus okay. because Venus, you know, for years has been overshadowed by Serena. Mm-hmm. Serena is uh, arguably one of the, if not the greatest athlete of all time. Yeah, not just tennis player, argument. but greatest athlete of all time. Um, so, you know, Venus has been overshadowed by Serena's success mm. in uh, the last few years. And I like the fact that the movie kind of highlighted Venus. Uh, you know, they, they showed that relationship, how she was the old, the one that the father pushed the most and kind of kept Serena in the shadow. Mm. But then, you know, they showed that conversation of, yo, I kept you in the shadow because I know you're going to be the greatest. You know what I mean? Venus is just going to be the one that gets there first. But um, it was a great movie. Will Smith did a great job, um, and 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 it was inspiring. My homeboy, he has a daughter, and he he called me and told me he saw it, and he was like, "Yo, that movie was so inspiring, especially if you have a daughter yeah. as a black man." Um, and I think they did a great job. That's a really really good movie. If any if anybody hasn't seen it yet, they should definitely watch that movie. I did I did see some social media traction of folk. Did he have a whole second family or something? Did they get into? Yeah, they they spoke about that. Uh, they, they they addressed that that he had um other children. Okay, from an outside relationship. Um, yeah, they they addressed that briefly. I mean, <clears throat> can we call a spade a spade? Every time I watch these documentaries, 
that focus on fathers that like really helped their kids reach their goals, they kind of have to have some ain't shit in them they're all kind of pieces of shit like tiger's dad was kind of a piece of shit mm-hmm. joe jackson was kind of a piece of shit i'm hearing from just from women's side mm-hmm. he king richard <laughs> oh, was kind of a side. piece of shit <laughs> that's the side you're here from like okay, you, no, go ahead. you have to be raised by a toxic person to to make it um no i'm not gonna say you have to be raised by a toxic person in order to make it but uh there's definitely some connection there like the, you know it, it's it's just in our community. Matthew you know Knowles, I mean? like, kind of a piece of shit. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, it happens, man. I mean, you you have you have you know these these relationships on the side, um, and sometimes things happen. Children of children are created, and but you want to have a family with this person, and you know it's unfortunate because if you have kids, and you know you kind of want to be there for all the well, you should be there for all your kids, mm. um, but most of the time it doesn't work out like that, and then you have these families growing up with these secrets and these things like. A friend of mine, he did um, Ancestry.com. Okay. I think that's what he did. And uh, he just he just found his real father. Okay. Through cool. that. And we were having a talk. And, you know, he was. I was asking him, I was like, yo, do you have any um, hard feelings towards your mom? Mm. That she, you know, she never told you this. And uh, he said at first he kind of did. But he was like, you know, he really, he really doesn't. Like, he was like, you know, for whatever reason, his mom didn't, you know, want to let people know that she had a relationship with this guy. And, you you know, you think about it, it's like, you know, our, our parents were young at one point. Mm-hmm. And um, sometimes you have relationships with people you're not supposed to have a relationship with and things like that. And then, you know, next thing you know, you're pregnant. But it's like you can't tell people oh, it's his kid. You got to, yeah. especially if you have a relationship with somebody else. Mm-hmm. So it's a lot of things, man, that, you know, you, you kind of uncover in, in doing things like that. Um, but I do think that it's... um. It's amazing to find who your real parents are. Sure. For me, it would have been rough to to accept something like that. Like yeah. I, I talk to my homeboy every day. I'm like, damn. For me, it would have been rough. Mm. But um, he's happy, and um, you know, and it's he. It was an interesting thing because he found out that his father was into music. You know, he's into music, mm. and he was saying how you know, had he known his dad when he was younger, it may have given him more confidence for sure to kind of pursue his musical dreams, being that his dad has success in 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 the industry. So. It was interesting. It was a whole deep conversation that we went on, but the bottom line is that he, his mom had a relationship, a side relationship with a guy, ended up having a kid, but she couldn't obviously tell because yeah. whatever the situation was back back then, mm. you know, she just couldn't tell people that her and this guy had a, a side relationship and things like that. So I'm saying that it happens both ways is what I'm saying. Oh, like, you know, the mother can have a, a oh, kid yeah. from a, a relationship that she did, wasn't supposed to have as well as men do in the uh, King Richard movie. Well, I mean, I think with dads like, uh, Venus and, and Serena's Tiger Woods Matthew Knowles all these people mm-hmm. all very <clears throat> ambitious and risk takers as as people even in relationships so <laughs> I'm saying we can't always have ambition as like a buffet like yeah. if somebody's ambitious yeah they're gonna be, they're gonna all, be ambitious all, across, across the, the board they're not gonna yeah, right. personal business and in 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 life and with women and or with men I'm gonna need more I'm gonna need more fucking thrills I need to keep my mm-hmm. adrenaline going yeah. like yeah, it's gonna happen in fucking too. <laughs> yeah, it happens. It happens. Like I said, it happens more often than we think. Um, again, you know, I started. I started thinking. I was like, damn, how many of the homies, if they decided to do, to, to do ancestry dot com, would find out? Yeah, that their dad isn't their real dad. Some you know shit. what I'm saying? It's like, like, like I said, our parents were young at one point. We gotta, yeah. we gotta keep that in perspective. Our parents were young. They were having fun, um, and things happen, man. Things happen. So yeah. you know, I know sometimes it's easier to say. Oh no, this is your dad. And it's like, nah, that ain't my pops. <laughs> that ain't my it's pops. It's subjective. Yeah, like, it's that ain't subjective. my pops. What you was doing, ma? You know what I'm saying? That type of thing. But yeah, the King Richard movie is a great movie. Uh, they got that one right. Um, and shout out to Will Smith, another great movie to his catalog. For sure. It sucks that his press run has to involve his sex life and Jada's ambitions. I mean, <laughs> she's an ambitious person. No, I get it. You know, I mean, listen, if things happen, you know, she want to have entanglements and things like that. Well, I, I mean, Listen, Jade is beautiful, man. I get it. I'm with you. Speaking of family, Thanksgiving's coming up. Yeah. Uh, I mean, outside of the genocide, it is one of my favorite holidays. Well, is it, what, did they change it officially? Is it Native American? No, it's the next day. 
So we, we still no, <laughs> so no, we I still God, we're still doing Thanksgiving. Oh, okay, we're still giving thanks for but the we genocide. Acknowledging, but okay. then the next day it's like the repass. We trying to yeah, it's like we try to promote change. <laughs> yeah, like okay. yo, ah, oh, got it, got that it. That was okay. crazy that we did that. But. Yes, but yo, here we here's another day. Yeah, where we can acknowledge that yo, we did some fucked up shit. I know we've discovered India and we still call you Indians. But yeah, like, yeah. Yo, my bad. <laughs> it's uh again, it's, when you start to un- un- <laughs> peel back these layers, man, it's, 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 this society is crazy. But um. Yeah, uh, the holiday is coming up. I don't like mm. to say Thanksgiving. The holiday is coming up. Okay. Uh, just another excuse for people not to go to work and spend time sure. with their family. Look at what we need to spend time with our family. We need uh, to celebrate a genocide. genocide. Yeah, okay. like we got to celebrate. Erasing an entire yeah, group it's, of people. It's this, I'm telling you, the society is crazy, man. But either way, yeah, it's, it's time with the family coming up. Um, it's interesting for me now around the, the holidays because I'm vegan. So now my mom has to call me like two weeks before. Like, okay, so what is it that you need? I probably wouldn't even invite you to keep it a buck. You can. It's all sides. Like, veggies. Now, like, just have some veggies for me. Have some veggies and some rice and, you know, things like that. I'm cool. I mean, see, you've, you're also this guy, so this example could be weird. When everyone's smoking and drinking and doing whatever, like, at a party, and then there's, like, that one person in the corner that's just dead sober, and, like, they're just fucking up the vibes. Or, like, mm-hmm. if everyone's tripping on mushrooms and it's one person that's not, and it's, like, Yo, you're really fucking up the energy over here. Mm-hmm. That's kind of how I feel you would be at a Thanksgiving table. No, nah, I mean, it would it would be it would my plate would look a lot different from everybody else's. Think you better than us? Yeah, no, no, nah, not at all. My plate would look different, but it won't be again. It's, it's nah, you can. I'm, 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 I'm watch. I'm gonna get my vegan shit off just for you. I'm gonna tag you in every vegan plate I post this 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 thing this holiday. I don't want to mm-hmm. say Thanksgiving this holiday. Um, but yeah, it's it's um. We need to normalize being vegan, man. Because I feel like I'm being, I be, I'm outcasted a lot. Like when I go out with my friends now. Yeah, well deserved. They're like, oh, he doesn't eat that. I'm like, why do you have to yell at? Them? <laughs> like, like, why you gotta yell at? Like, okay, yeah, no, nah, don't eat that. Well, it's, it's our get back because you have to fucking <clears throat> remind us every time. It's beating into no, our brains. I, I don't have to remind. I don't remind anybody. Mm. Like, I just, I show up, and if there's nothing there that I can't eat, I just don't eat. <sighs> we were talking about doing like our team Christmas dinner and planning that. And we we're going through list of restaurants, and every time we landed on one, it was like, yo, mall. Can't, can't no do carbone. It's no <laughs> vegan option. Nope. <laughs> I can do carbone. It would just be all veggies. I was that's at, it. I was at Barbuda this past week looking at the menu because they got this nice little table like by the kitchen mm-hmm. set up, and I was like, oh, this would be ill. Mm-hmm. Looked at the menu. I was like, all right, I guess he could have the kale salad, <laughs> yeah. but I don't know how they make the dressing. <laughs> <laughs> nah, listen, man. All you gotta do is make sure they got veggies. As long as it's veggies, mm. I'm good. Well, luckily, you don't have to deal with what a lot of us whites have to deal with come holiday time. Mm-hmm. A lot of us whites have some relatives with some opinions. Absolutely. Us, and, us too. Don't and worry when, about it. And when the wild turkey gets going, <laughs> <laughs> they want to express them. That's how it always happens, though. Listen, I keep telling you, man, we more alike than we think, man. Mm. I promise you, y'all, it's the same thing with my family. Like, once that alcohol gets to going, the secrets start coming out. But I feel like everyone from the tri-state that's white has probably an uncle or aunt or whatever that either lives upstate or maybe Midwest and they mm-hmm. come out and like you feeling real democratic at, yeah. at dinner. Yeah. And that's, then someone has to get their point. They read off of Facebook this morning <laughs> it's, it's, and then it becomes a fucking argument. Listen, bro, I have uncles that still argue over a hundred dollars from 1978. <laughs> but those are funny. Arguments. Yeah, but it's like, fam, y'all gotta put that there. He owe me a hundred. I'm like, fam, it's 2021. Like relax. When I'm, Going for my second plate, I really don't want to overhear lock her up. Yeah. Like I just don't need that in my life. Dog, can we just watch the Cowboys and the, the Lions, whoever the fuck is every single year? I don't I, I don't care. Yeah, no, man. I didn't vote. I'm part of the problem. Leave me alone. Even if I voted, I'm not talking to y'all. I wanna I wanna bring up politics this year at at, at dinner though. Just, I only, to, just to rouse shit up. Oh, but but you know why? Only because I feel like I, I tell people all the time, I think one of the best things that happened during the Trump uh, presidency was more people started to pay attention to politics than before. I think okay. more people started to like, you know, really pay attention to to what's going on. They started to get involved, and however they got the information, social media, wherever they got it from, I think more people started to pay attention to the presidency. So it's just interesting to hear like people's opinions now because mm-hmm. more people are reading and they're trying to figure out what is the president doing versus what they're not doing and what's going on. And, so it's just fun now. It's like, I don't care who you voted for. That's not the, the topic of discussion. It's more so like, what do you think is going on right now? Like, what's, are you 
happy with the way this presidency is going? Mm. What do you think it changed? What did the president say he was going to do that he hasn't done? Things like that. It's just funny to hear people talk about shit like that. It's just sometimes I feel, I feel you, but I also kind of think the other way of maybe some people shouldn't pay attention to politics. Maybe this ain't your lane. Oh, for sure. Maybe, maybe uh, some cons- people in maybe politics- construction is more your lane. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> some people in politics shouldn't pay attention to politics. Like, it, let's just be honest. Like, it's like, what do you do again, sir? What do you, why are you here? Like, I, at my fucking grandmother's repast, one of my uncles was debating gender pronouns to us, and no one brought it up. Like, mm-hmm. we're just at a repast, and he mm-hmm. just wants to talk about, I, I can't believe I have to use these pronouns. Like, dog, you don't. You, no, you, no, <laughs> one said, no one said a word. Yeah. But it, again, <laughs> that's just because- We're in a home. There, there's just one bathroom. But I like older, older relatives, like you said, they're still on these- like, my mom sends me things, mm. and I'm like, my first of all, this is from six years ago, and this is not true. This is not happening. This was, they found that this was false. It's like they see shit, and they, they go with it. And it's like, ma, that's not real. That, they already found out that that was fake. That's not happening. Because they come from that era where whatever was said on the news or whatever is, is fact. And, exactly. then, and then they sign up for Facebook, not realizing anyone can post anything. And it's like, exactly. damn. Exactly. That, that happens. Collusion in Russia? Exactly. <laughs> that happens once a week. I promise you. I Biden's get son did what with his laptop? Yeah. It's, it's just like, that's not, it didn't happen. That's old. First of all, that's four years ago. Um, but it's just fun to, 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 to listen to family, be around family. And even if they, they don't know what the hell they're talking about, it's just a great time. Outside of politics, there will be the... When are you going to settle down and give us some kids? Oh, my question? God. Jesus Christ. You're getting into that age where, do they just No, it ain't getting into up? I'm here. I'm, <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm full-fledged here. Um, yeah, man, it's just, I don't know. Can we normalize not having children? I mean, I guess. Why we can't normalize that? I think traffic is bad as it is already. Exactly. Less, kids, less kids coming into the earth. Yeah, and, and, and. I'm fine with. See, because for me, if I had a bunch of kids, right? Like, say I had a, just a bunch of kids running around. Mm. They, my family will look at me like, he, here he go. He keep pumping them out. <laughs> but the fact that I don't have any, it's, it's still like. Can't win. Yeah, it's like, yo, all right, fam. Like, I just can't win with y'all. But again, man, the thing with kids with me is, you know, I, if, I, if I wanted kids, I could have kids. Mm. But I want a family. you saying your dick work is what you're saying? Oh, it works. Okay. I, I check it every morning. It works. But it's just, you any know. Any scares lately? Are they no. still swimming? No, absolutely. Okay. They're still swimming. But, um. Yeah, it's just, I just, I don't want just kids. I don't want to just have a baby mom. Like, I want, I want a family. I want to wake up. It looks fun. It, it looks, <laughs> it looks like a fun time. That's just, like, having a family looks dope, but it's hard, man. It's not easy. Well, you have less pressure. Your sister has a child. Mm-hmm. But I'm the only one out of my sisters and brothers that doesn't have a kid. Mm. Like, I'm literally the only one. I am an only child. Mm-hmm. And I have been getting that question since I was 16. Like, my mom wanted me to be on 16 and pregnant. <laughs> like, yo, when are the grandkids coming? I'm like, ma, I just learned how to use this yeah. thing. <laughs> I haven't mastered it yet, yeah. but I'll, I'll, I'll let you know when I get there. Yeah, man. Yeah, you are the only GSO. That conversation it's, is... It's rough. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, don't, I don't wish that on anybody. I already know. No, it, But you changed. have a dog. So I know. No, oh, no. Like, Basie now has become... My mother really treats Basie like... They all do. Like an actual They human. all do. They all moms treat treat their kids' dog like it's their grandchildren. Your grandchildren. Which terrifies me when I actually do have kids because I don't think my mom is going to let me raise my children. I think she's going to kidnap my kids. Yeah. The way she treats Basie and the way she's been pressuring me, I think she just wants to have like more kids. Well, that's the grandparents' role is to essentially become parents again. Raise, drop, raise kids Drop your again. kids off while you want to go do they some not, fuck shit. They're not doing nothing else. <laughs> what are they home watching what? What are they watching now? I don't know what the parents watch now. Facebook. Okay. CNN, home watching Facebook. Fox News. Watch, watch the grandkids while we go out and make some more grandkids. That's, how, <laughs> that's all we're trying to do. Go out and, and, and fornicate. Yeah, I wonder how many kids came because you was able to drop your kid off. Oh, millions. <laughs> millions. That's Look how at all, the cycle. That's how all the second, the second kids come. Yeah. Well, and all my cousins, for the most part, have kids but they're older so my mom's already been past the great aunt thing with mm-hmm. them but yeah pressure's on this thanksgiving might get weird might no, get really the weird. pressure the pressure is on for me though I, I i speak like it's not but it is like my some of my, like a lot of my nieces and nephews have kids mm-hmm. you know what i mean like i'm i'm that like yeah. where it's like a lot of my nieces and nephews have kids and it's like they looking at me like yo oh what's up what you doing i'm mm-hmm. like nah nephew i'm out here right around. 
I'm I can, still I see free. you got grades and you yeah, yeah, I'm, nah, I'm still free, man. I'm still out here running around. I can come and go as I please, man. That's the beauty of it, I think, mm. though, for me, is the fact that I don't have a bunch of baby moms running around. Like, I you think know that. No, I don't. Who, man, ain't no, who I, knows? Your kid could do Ancestry.com in, in 15 years and find you? Nah. Nah. That, a woman would have definitely told me by now, like, yo, you know this is your kid. I mean, what about that time in Virginia? What t- what are you talking about? I'm just trying to fish. Trying <laughs> yeah, to find. I say, yo, you got me looking at you like, wait, first of all, when have we ever been to I don't Virginia? Think you and I together? Been to Virginia. <laughs> never been to Virginia. That's why I'm like, wait, what? Nah, nah, never that. Nah, I don't have no kids, thankfully. But um, hopefully soon. Hopefully soon. I mean, just don't pull out. It's easy. See, you see the white boys and y'all, right. y'all give Listen, advice. Just, right. Y'all are just crazy with y'all that's advice. Not, that's how you have a child. Yeah, but that but you can't it's say science. don't pull out. Like, what if it's I'm 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 in somebody that I want I should pull out of. I mean, are you r- saying don't have sex? Dice. No, see, see, now you want me to roll. This is in Vegas, Rory. This look, is my life. Look at all the amazing athletes that have came because fathers rolled the dice and nutted inside somebody. Name one athlete that we got with. <laughs> LeBron. LeBron. I was going to say, yeah, LeBron. <laughs> we hear about know, the story all the time. <laughs> but how do you, wait, all right, so let's talk about it. What story are you talking about? Like, how do you know LeBron's dad rolled the dice? How do you know that wasn't a, a Cause, conversation? Because he boogied. Do, <laughs> <laughs> we ain't seen him since. He rolled the dice and got out of that game immediately. <laughs> he lost. Oh, he definitely lost. He, he, that's like well, he, he, threw away, he threw away a Mega Millions ticket. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, nah, he's he, he's he's definitely the, the the biggest idiot ever walking away from that child. And like the way Braun looks, I'm sure his obviously his father looks like him. So I'm sure his dad walking around Ohio and everyone's like. That's got to be LeBron's dad. There's no way this his, six nine oh, dude is. I can promise you that looks you, like Bron isn't his father. I can promise you his biological dad is not walking around Ohio. Where do you think he is? <laughs> Somewhere trying to kill his son. <laughs> Somewhere slitting his wrist. If you what? If your son is LeBron James and you walked out of his life, and you know what's oh crazy? My God. It would have been like early too. A lot of people make walking it, out of any child's life course, is crazy. I don't, yeah, we don't want to say that. But when your child turns out to be LeBron James. You gotta be trying to kill yourself every day. But it was early too. So many people make it like in their twenties and thirties, and then the parents are like, "Damn, fuck." Bron was the prodigy at 14, thirteen. Yeah, fourteen. Like, you he knew. boogied it a few years later. Like, yeah. was like, "Fuck." Yeah, yeah. Like fourteen, your, your <laughs> son was already. The, yeah, your son was already the best player in the in the country at the age of probably twelve, thirteen years old, and you were somewhere sitting around like trying to get back in. It was like, nah, we're not doing that. You see where he's headed, and you trying to get back in. Nah, we're not doing that. And he's like publicly unforgiving. Oh yeah, no. <laughs> Let's it be known. Yeah, he's not like, like hey, nah. listen, I can help where I can, but that relationship got yeah. men some other time. He just, yo, fuck him. Yeah, and, and I'm not mad. Oh, no, I'm not mad at him. Not mad at him at all. That's how it should be. Fuck him. So yeah, maybe if you nut in a woman that you probably wouldn't want to Rose, be with, and then you boogie, maybe I would you will have like, like Le- some I some prodigy kid that I don't want to end up like LeBron's. Dad. With your genes, he could be the greatest rapper of all time. Who knows? Yeah, but I don't want to end up like LeBron's dad. I want to be there. Is there a, a really good rapper from a two parent home? Yeah, I'm sure there is. I don't want to hear their raps. Well, no, you got to hear broken. <laughs> I don't want to hear about stability. Bro- broken home raps. <laughs> Hell no. Broken home raps is different though. Like it's a different struggle that is in your bars when you come from a broken home for sure. Oh, and you, I mean you could hear it. We know the rappers that like. Dog. And we so you had, sick. You had a really good childhood. Like <laughs> yeah, you like, gotta relax a little bit. And we so like perfect example. Eight Mile when he found out that Rabbit went to uh when, when he found out that uh uh. Papa Doc. Papa Doc found out that uh, he went to a private school and all of that. Oh, yeah. It was like, why is that a shot? <laughs> like, no, by the way, his I, parents cared. Like, I do know some killers that went to private school. but <laughs> I was going to say, like, it's like people people look at me like because we wore a uniform at my school. So they think it was like private and privileged. I'm like, fam, it was killers in my school. It's dudes right now that I was in school with that are like locked up. Go tell the, the kids at Cardinal Hayes they privileged. <laughs> this is what I'm saying. So I don't never, I never understood why that was a shot. I'm like, the parents care, try to put their kids in the best position to receive a good education. Yeah. Why is that a shot at the kid? Like, but then, but also, you can't say that and then say you got it out the mud. I never. First of all, I never say that. Like, I'm not saying I, you say. No, no, no. I'm saying I'm, rappers. I don't agree with that though. I like, want to see some of these rappers mud. Yeah. <laughs> Like, yeah, a lot of the mud ain't mud. It's not that muddy, bro. It's not. It's not muddy. But I don't. I, I don't like when rappers do that only because I feel like it's um it's kind of disrespectful to their parents. Oh, for sure. You know what I mean? Like saying that you came from nothing and like I just never. I understood. You know, situations be fucked up and but I just never like to. 
I don't like when rappers say that because my thing is always, you know, you know my mom had two jobs. Mm. And I could easily say, you know, we struggled. I don't, I never, I didn't feel like I struggled. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I didn't, I don't ever remember a time where I didn't eat at night. Mm. And I never remember a time where I didn't have clothes and shit like that. So, but I know now as an adult, my mom bust her ass. Mm-hmm. So I can never sit in the way and say I came from nothing or I got yeah. it out the, no, I don't. And I'm pretty sure, you know, other people too, their parents worked hard and maybe they couldn't have those one pair of sneakers and now they feel like they came from the mud. Yeah. Like, what's the mud? Like, something happened to you where it was like all the other kids got to go on a field trip and then you couldn't go because your mom couldn't pay the little fee or whatever and now you feel like, yo, I came from nothing. Like, fam, and that's not yo, coming from nothing. A kid, at least from my era and your era, having multiple sneakers as a kid was not a thing. Like no, that. it was I was not poor. Right. I am multiple sneakers. Absolutely. Like, it just, you had a pair or two. Absolutely. And they had to last for the school year. Exactly. <laughs> your mom made sure, yo, these are your play sneakers. Yeah. And these are your, you know, mm-hmm. when you're going out sneakers. Like, that's all. But like, say it with raps, like, I came from the mud. And then you see that mom, like, his mom was a doctor. Now, like, Where? what mud did you come from? Your mom was a doctor. Like, what are you talking about? Like, yo, God, God rest the dead with big. Listen to Ready to Die before, like, watching interviews and shit about Valletta Wallace like what a sweet woman <laughs> come on fam what That's what, what an amazing supportive <laughs> yeah, mother like like wait <laughs> we gotta start like just let's just start rappers let's start keeping it real a lot of us come from families and households where parents are doing okay mm. got some money um not a lot but you know food is on the table every night you got clothes on your back things like that um and you just grow up into a teenager and you start hanging around with a different crew and you fall into trying to hustle and sell. Mm-hmm. But you didn't have to do that. No. Like, let's not make it like rappers got to start putting things in perspective. You didn't have to do that. You chose to do that. I, I sold weed in high school because I wanted to. Exactly. But my, that's what my most mother kids. was going to have dinner on the table. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Like, you wasn't selling crack <laughs> to feed your family. Like, at 15. Stop, man. Cut it out. Like, that and, shit is not happening. And I got to check the age on some of these rappers that are rapping about crack. Yeah. Crack wasn't even really a thing. Past 98. <laughs> Like, you really wasn't getting you it wasn't with crack. crack. Yeah, no, nah, I don't want to hear that. Crack talk after 98, I don't, I don't want to hear that shit. You wasn't, you wasn't chef and crack. There was like one or two people that was still smoking crack in the mid-2000s. Yeah, it might be one or two people now to this day <laughs> that's still smoking. But as far as saying we was all hustling crack, no, you was not. That wasn't even the thing. It was weed. Now it's pills. It's uh, lean and all this other shit. Crack is, is definitely out of there. What's, what's like the, who's like the fentanyl, Jeezy? Who's getting the fentanyl for 17.5? Bro, I don't need, I don't know, and, and I don't want to joke about yeah, it. I, I don't know, but that's a that right there is not something for the for for, for people to be playing with. Oh, God, that no. shit, that's a dangerous, dangerous thing. And I'm I hope that none of these rappers are stupid enough to really be touching that shit. I mean, because a lot of these rappers now, you know, they like to they like to still be doing this dumb shit after they get a deal. See, before it was different. Like a lot of the you know artists, they had to hustle or whatever before they got a deal. But once they got the deal, that shit was over with. A lot yeah. of these young dudes now, when they talking about drilling and spending, the, they are actively doing this. It's like, fam, you have a, a company has invested millions <laughs> into your stardom, mm-hmm. and you're still out here spinning the block, running down on ops and those other stupid shit. I mean, listen, man, calling me getting old, I just don't understand. I thought after you got the deal, that's when all of that shit stopped. I mean, a lot of them are doing it after, I'm um, after the deal for real. Like they didn't do it before. Like mm-hmm. a lot of those Chicago rappers, you know, like that was in oh, their yeah. DNA before. Yeah. They just unfortunately, to, they, yeah. I know, very mm-hmm. unfortunate. They just happen to be rhyming words, right? But with a lot of that culture that everyone has taken from Chicago musically and, and slang and words, mm-hmm. and I see the whole rest of the country doing that shit. At like, no, dog, you got the deal. Mm-hmm. People do that to get to the deal. Mm-hmm. Don't do it after you get the deal. <laughs> right? Yeah, I, I don't. I never understood it. I'm like, I understand living your raps and wanting to, but it's like after the deal, bro. That's just Listen. not smart. That's just not a smart. It's like, bro, you have a deal. A company is, is invested in you and saying, hey, we believe in you. We're giving you this opportunity. You don't then take that opportunity and decide, yo, I'm going to run around with a gun every day. And if I see an op, I'm running down. Like, it's like, what? First, and we got to get into who, what's really, who's really your op? <laughs> like, we got to, it's a lot of things in that we just say shit and we just run with shit. And it's like, all right, who is really your op? In, in so many cases, men, men in the op thing, is like the girl version of all these bitches hating on me. And, uh, yeah. and, and a girl has not said a word yet. Like, I have like all these nobody haters. Nobody said nothing. 
Nobody's hating. Uh, nobody even really knows you. Yeah. Like, what are we talking? It's just like we perpetuate a lot of bullshit in our culture that we need to really have honest and open discussions about. Because it's like when I see these young, yeah, the ops, the ops. Why is that your op? You should do a op-ed on ops. I should. A opumentary. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, Carl, let's set it up. Let's set it up. Yeah, I want to do an opumentary. And I, I want to actively the start finding these rappers and say, okay, who's your ops? <laughs> let's discuss this. Let's discuss, and let's discuss why y'all are ops. Because I'm pretty sure it's a simple conversation. And you really find out y'all really do fuck with each other. Y'all like each other. Or I want to find your op and ask him if he knows you exist. Yeah. Or <laughs> does he know that he's your op? Because he could be like, no, I don't even know who that is. Like... It's like we got to really start having these conversations because I promise you, we perpetuate a lot of bullshit that is not real in our culture. Mm -hmm. I promise you we do. So, man, sounds trendy on the internet. Set it up, Carl. Let's do Opumentary it. coming soon. It's coming soon. It's going to be a three-part series, too. Why three? About more. Yeah, because it's a lot of shit. We got to get okay. to a lot of shit, Rory. It's a lot of shit we got to uncover. Where are we starting this, this opumentary? Right, Bush. No, I want to start in the Bronx, where I'm from. I mean, there's probably some ops in the Bronx, though. Yeah, but I mean, a lot of dudes be saying they got ops and they don't. For sure. So it's like, I just want to stand outside with them and walk around. I'm like, where they at? <laughs> you're you're going to be the op. No, no, I'm not. <laughs> Listen, I got the camera. Carl got the, Carl got the camera. I got the mic. I just want to know where the ops. Where are they? I just want to know how it's going to go over in the Bronx of Carl with a camera. And Maul asking, yo, where's your op? You might need some security <laughs> for that. Nah, they, they, listen, man. Listen, I know where to go and what time to get out of there. Let me tell you that. One thing about the Bronx, I know where to go and what time to get out. That's what, That's how you move in the hood. Where, where you going and what time you leaving? Uh, go on. No, no, no. I need I'm to know saying, these things. I, I'm just, no, no. I'm just telling you, I know how to move in the Bronx. Certain areas, we're just not going to go. We're just going to take their word for it. There's ops over there. Because unfortunately, the, the friend of the op is usually the one that, that gets the brunt of the bullshit. So I just want to, I have to be prepared as your co-host. No, we, listen, what we're trying to do is we're trying to actively bring peace into the community mm. through finding that you gentlemen really don't have an issue with each other. Because I am tired of walking outside and having, from our, our old show, people coming up to me. When I didn't say a word, someone else on the show said a word, and I got to explain it with you and, and, and your money bags with, with them. Uh, me, look me, what you got. Me but look, at the, look at the type of shit I bring in the world. He's like, I'll leave money bags on the picture, and now people are approaching you about it. Okay. You know what? Weird. No, no, no. Let's actually have a real conversation. I think we could talk about this. We could talk about anything, Rory. This is our platform. I had a gentleman run down on me at a Donda show because of Ma. Uh, oh, man. Jesus Christ. Um, I'll put it this way: If you catch, is that op? if you catch the pun, I I was very stressed out. <laughs> I really know how it feels to be stressed out, stressed out. Listen, when you're face to face with your adversity. But but <laughs> see, that's what I'm saying. That's not an op of mine, though. I have no. no problem with that gentleman. Oh, we listen. Let's start with the, the bullshit. It was consequence. Okay. We had said on on uh, on our reply video, you had brought up the situation that had happened. Which I apologize for, because I really shouldn't have said uh, his name in that video. And I, I apologize to him. I DM'd him about that. Um, you know, I was just going off and it was emotions were high. But I apologize for even saying his name. But I, he took that and, 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 and took it another way. And it was like, bro, I don't have an issue with you. I apologize for even saying your name. Mm. And it was like, at that time, you popped on who I thought was a friend of mine. Yeah. And I was just defending my, my friend. Like, that's all. He had a problem with that. I think just bringing it up again, like yeah, and I, which, and, which, yeah, and, 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 and I'll say it again. I apologize. I should have never said his name during that whole thing, and that was that was corny of me, and that was stupid of me, and I, you know it happens. And you know what I love about Consequence because you had told me that you guys had squashed it via. I, via, I, I or, squashed yeah. it. I, so, I, I thought it was squashed until so, you told me he. So I watched it. I watched the fucking Donda show, and I feel him come up to me, and it was loud. So I was like trying to hear what he was saying. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I thought you and Maul squashed that shit. And this is why I love cons. He said, yeah, but we ain't squash it. <laughs> see, that's, <laughs> see, that's what I'm saying. It's like, <laughs> what are we talking about, man? It's squash. Like, it's no issue. We have no issue with cons. Man. Shout all, out man. to cons. All love. Queens. Um, love yeah, love man, consequence. That, that, we, had, we had a conversation. It was just funny. When he said that, I I had to, like, laugh. But see, if I, I was a rapper. It. If I was a rapper. It was very Linden. Yeah. It very Linden turned Boulevard. Into, it might have turned into, that's my op. See how fast that goes? It's like, mm -hmm. it's really not my op. Like, I have no problems with this gentleman. Like, yeah. it's, it was stupid shit in the past, and that's over with. And, and then when he brought the situation up, I was like, fam, I was in, like, high school when that happened. Right, you was nowhere <laughs> around. Like, <laughs> like, see, now that I think about it, just thinking about you in that situation, trying to even talk about that is hilarious to me, because it's like, you were, you were nowhere to be found. 
you were super young when that happened. Yeah. And it's like as a as a man now, you're sitting here having to have this talk about this shit. And, yeah, man. And on top of that, I'll I'll name drop. Where where we were standing mm -hmm. in our little thing, Kanye West is right there performing. Yeah. Dave Chappelle and Jay Electronica are right there. Mm -hmm. And then who's the least most important person in there? Then there's Rory sitting there. Yeah. And then Consequence comes to talk to me about a podcast. I'm like, <laughs> dog. I'm in the presence of Dave Chappelle right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. I'm with my brother Jay Electronica. And, I have no idea what's and I'm going watching on. this beautiful fucking show. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my only in our culture, man. I promise you, this shit is so crazy, man. But yeah. yeah, that that that's that's the thing in the past. It's all love. Uh shout out to all parties involved. <sighs> Listen, shout out to Kyle. It was it, it was a fun. Shout out, to, shout out to Jay Elect. Shout out to everybody, man. Fuck it. <laughs> Jay, Jay Elect look over like what? <laughs> Do you know Khan? I was that's, like, I've never met him in my life. Yeah, that's what I'm it's the most <laughs> random thing. It's like, what is happening? Like, and that's why, it, yeah, I, I was stupid for that. I should have never said that, but, but it's okay. I apologize for having to put you in that <laughs> situation, Rory. I, I didn't want that for you and your life, man. I'm sorry. It was one of the most interesting nights. No, you. you of the, just that yeah, entire night. No, you that was me, just one of the small you, things. You called me and we laughed about <laughs> it. I couldn't believe what you were telling. I was like, what is happening right now in Atlanta, man? But, oh, man, that's part of being a potter, man. It's that's our new change uh, subject so please don't play that again like when we get out of a topic to get to the next one we'll just like a new topic just flew in that sounds it's like, like the news that sounds like <laughs> bro that sounds like the Power Rangers when they had to like when it was morphing time like if we go from consequence story into different strokes live can we talk about that it's is back. that really happening? Different Strokes is back. Facts of Life is back. Reenactments. <sighs> Kevin Hart is playing Gary Coleman, or Arnold, rather. Um, Kevin Hart, <laughs> I love you. You were very uh, supportive uh, publicly. He was, for yes. For Rory and myself. Um, love you forever for that. Uh, genius at what you do. Um, one of the greatest comedians one of the greatest comedic actors probably ever and a really good actor because i see that Ke uh, kev is starting to do more serious roles too he's trying to stray away from just comedic actor but um i like the one with uh brian cranston it was a good movie yeah um I don't but know go ahead shit on I, yeah i don't know about this one this, this, is, I, this doesn't feel real it, it feels like a bad snl sketch yeah, like where I, they would like try to let's do a reboot and it would be a parody I think yeah. Damon Wayans is playing Willis. What's hap what is all right. These are grown men. Like these like So so is Gary Coleman. No. <laughs> Rest in peace. But like it's aesthetic, it's just not we don't need who nobody we don't need this. Kevin Hart doesn't look like a child. This Gary is, Coleman looks like a child. This is what I'm but we don't need no who asks for different strokes. Is it live? Like in front like, of a live studio on set audience, I believe. Yeah. So they're shooting this for TV. Yes. Yeah. Do you think they'll reenact the uh, the episode where Arnold almost gets touched by the neighborhood molester? I want to see. I want to see. Kev I would really to see pull Kevin, that one out. I, I, must say, I would love to see Kevin Hart play that role, like in in that moment. But we didn't ask for this, though. Mm -hmm. Like I don't even understand why they would give. Who put the budget behind this? ABC apparently. Who who's playing uh Philip Drummond? And what was um Shorty's name? The the sister. I don't even remember. I, is the entire cast of Different Strokes passed away? No. No. Mm -mm. Who's still alive? Uh oh wow. Willis died young. I know the girl died young. I I wish we had their names. Apologies for this, but yeah, I feel like the whole cast has passed away. Which is also weird that you would kind of just make what seems to be a parody of such a great show I just don't know who this is not something that I think we need I know we didn't ask for it I didn't see mm. like the public really saying yo we need different strokes to so I just don't understand and look it may be it may turn out to be great you know what I mean like Kevin Hart knows more about Hollywood than I know like and he mm. you know what I mean I you said Damon Wayans is in it as well I believe he's, he knows he's more about Willis. Hollywood than we do listen they may make some great shit man but I just don't just like looking at it, like and reading the names and different strokes. I don't. We didn't ask for that. No. I like the cast. If they just did something else, 
Oh no, one thousand. <laughs> Damon Wayans and Kevin Hart in the movie together. I'm cool. I'm, I would I'm love there. It. I I support that. But different strokes. Mm, I gotta see is what you're talking about, Willis. Yeah, it's just not. So wait, okay. Are they supposed to be adults now? Is that the spin on this different strokes? Like, oh, maybe that could be it. Okay, they're now adults. But Kevin Hart, well, yeah, I guess Gary Coleman wasn't a little. He was a little kid, so yeah, I guess that could work. What What do you think Willis turned out to be in the show? Um, my guess would be uh maybe like a a lawyer. Willis was lawyerish. Yeah, maybe like a lawyer. And he went. He went back to Harlem to. Cl- Clean up the hood. Yeah, he has. He has. <laughs> I can practice. see. I can see that terrible storyline. <laughs> he has his practice in Harlem, trying to yeah. trying to teach people about the laws of the communities. And all. yeah, I can see that. Mr. Drummond still won't go up there. No. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, if they're trying to spin it like that now that they're a grown men and all of that, then okay. But I still, it's it, still weird. It would be very funny if they did it in modern time with like gentrification and like they took. Willis and Arnold from the projects and they actually just went across the street to the new uh skyline building that's in Harlem. Yeah, if they play if they play if they play with it like that, then you know, it may be interesting. Um, I'm open to being wrong. Like I said, these gentlemen know more about Hollywood obviously than we do mm. and more about acting than we do. So I mean maybe they got some 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 great writers. Maybe I mean Damon Wayne's and Kevin Hart is hard for them not to be funny. So I mean, you know, I just don't it's just different strokes and thinking about what different strokes is and was and trying to see it now and then attaching Damon Wayne and Kevin Hart. It's just kind of weird. Like yeah. I can't really, I can't see it, but again, I could be wrong and this could, this could turn out to be one of the, the funniest shows on television. I mean, facts of life as well. Carl, does it say who, who's in the facts of life? Did they give that set so, roster? Yeah. It says, um, Adam Sandler. No, <laughs> <laughs> Why you throw Adam out there I like that? <laughs> Why you Kevin, Adam Kevin James and David Spade. <laughs> it says John Litgo will be Mr. Drummond. Um, well, that's for, for different strokes. Yeah, for different. Um, let me see Facts of Life. Oh well, this is going to be interesting, and I think it airs December seventh. So some, they had they had to shoot the shit. These ain't no. Those are some 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 big names. Hell yeah, John Litgo, Damon Wayans, Kevin Hart. Like, I don't know, man. I'm gonna give it a chance. Yeah, but, me too. Like I said, it's, it's going to be funny. I, I'm, you know, Damon Wayans and Kevin Hart, it's, it's going to be funny, but just looking at it right now, just trying to picture it, it's just, I can't see it. It's just a little weird, but I'm open I'm open to checking out a couple episodes and then I'll I'll let you know. Well, yeah, we'll keep you guys locked on the different yeah, strokes. But right now, reboot. it just sounds a little weird. I'm with you. It feels a little weird. Music. Rory, what is that? <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm making it a thing. Okay, my bad. It's our thing now. I'm going to support you in this little sound effect. And like Carl's going to put cool like imagery of like, like beams like, okay. Of like the topics lasers. just falling from the sky. Okay. All right, cool. Yeah, it's going to be listen, like Listen, man, I'm, I'm, listen, I'm down to see it. Yeah. If like, it looks crazy, we'll cut it out for the next, for the next episode. Breaking. Adele put out an album. See, we're getting like real professional. Okay, shit. got you. We don't want to do the casual shit anymore. Uh, how do you feel? Did it draw any emotions? Did it make you feel like any different towards Rich Paul? Do you hate him now that he made Adele? <laughs> Rich made Adele happy. Is the music suffering now? Is um, the art suffering because Adele's happy? No, it was a good balance. It was there was definitely some some sad girl anthems on there. Okay, she didn't go full full blown happy. I did get in the proper listen to Adele mode, which I, I'm going to be vulnerable with you. Um, I did set up some candles and I, I I did have a soak. I did get in the tub, put some some Epsom salt in there, Doctor Teals, Rory. some bubbles. First of all, don't ever look at me and say you took a soak. I had a soak. <laughs> don't, don't. I can't let you go out like this. I bro. had a soak. Who are you becoming, man? Who? I'm, I'm old, man. My knees hurt. I have a broken rib. Like I needed soaks sometimes. Right. And, I, and when I was setting up for the soak, oh man, I was like, oh, Adele put out an album. What a perfect type of album to just like lay back in the bathtub you know when you go all the way to like just where your chin is uh-huh. when you really start feeling the music yeah yeah no I got you I want I want to talk more about this you, you're preparing we're gonna get to the Adele album mm-hmm. I promise you because I love Adele um, but let's get more to the how do you set up your soak uh, like what are you what are you doing like walk uh, me through this not that I want to think about you soaking because I don't but I understand. just walk me through it just so uh, I can see picture where... as if I had a bathing suit on okay I don't want to picture my, that either <laughs> I don't want to picture that either, but all right, you my guy. I'm, I'm secure on my own skin. Good. Um, you stop by your local winery. Okay. 
Get yourself uh, some twist off Chardonnay though. You can't. Yes. That cheaper wine brings out shittier emotions because there's like more sugar in there. Yeah. So it really rises your emotion level. Okay. Don't get the expensive Chardonnay. It okay. has to be twist off. So cheap Chardonnay. Absolutely. Okay. Got it. Wait. Check when sunset is happening. Okay. If you want to time it in that capacity, I don't know if your your bath bathroom has a a view of the sunset. Mm-hmm. But option B is to do it at night. Mm-hmm. You find the right lighting. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that means maybe you just turn on one closet light all the way down the hall. Yeah. Just yeah. so you have some or type candles. of- candles. Yeah. Can you, listen, man, if we're going to go there, let's go there, Rory. Candles. Always set the bath a little bit hotter than you can handle because water does cool off eventually. Cool, and you yeah. want to soak. You yeah. want to be in there for a while. Yeah, we're in here for a whole Adele album. It has to get into the, the tendons. For sure. It. Okay. You lay down um, some Epsom salt, which mm-hmm. you can get at Amazon. You can get it uh, at your local store. Mm-hmm. Line it just so, just so it covers the bottom a bit. Okay. Start running the water. Don't throw the bubbles in right away. You got to let it go. Get to like a quarter just so that Epsom salt can really get into the water. That so when we're coming. Got you. And then you need to, I'd say probably use half, about half of the, the bubble bath. Okay. Because bubbles do deteriorate as well. So you want to use half a bottle of bubble bath. And a full bottle of Chardonnay. On one, on one <laughs> soak. Half a bottle. Absolutely. Wealth. Go ahead. Yes. So <laughs> you want to make sure you have a rag next to the bathtub. Not just for tears but also because you want to be able to control the music while you're taking a soak okay so you got to wipe your hands off mm-hmm. your hands get wet maybe go through some old text messages maybe if you have a shared folder with your ex-girlfriend mm-hmm. um you want to go through run through some of those photos yeah. um if you're really wealthy and you have a projector top of the wall run mm-hmm. through your entire photo album okay got you i see where you're going with it okay so you're setting the mood so this sounds like you were making Irish stew. Can we call this Irish stew? For sure. Yeah, this yeah. sounds like an Irish stew. You prepped the hot water. You got it to a boiling temperature. What you did with the Epsom soles, you added some seasoning. Absolutely. It was added a, some seasoning. It was like shepherd's pie. Yeah, it was. I see where you're going with Okay, so you made Irish stew. So now when, you in this, when you're soaking and you're on your phone, do you, uh, let's say, think about an old flame and maybe send her a picture of your feet in the water and say, hey, life is great. <laughs> Like, <laughs> how do you get back into the old? <laughs> I mean, you gotta put you gotta put the old flame. Yeah. Just her and your close friends. Yeah. Okay. Just her and your close friends. Hey, and I'm in your close friends. Let me tell you right now. If I see you soaking in the tub, and you're <laughs> I'm screenshotting that shit and I'm putting it out like, yo, look what this nasty man is doing in close friends. <laughs> Side note: I posted last night a picture of Baisley sleeping, and Reason is in my close friend. Friend of the show. Yeah. My guy, Reason. Yeah. He cursed you out. He. He DM me a very valid question. <laughs> it bro, probably was something bro, I wanted to ask you. Bro, bro. Why does Basley Sleepman <laughs> gotta be in your close friends? Why the world can't see this? <laughs> Yo, I saw that and I was like, I said, my God, I think he I don't think he got the the, the close friend shit down pat yet. Cause it'd be shitty your close friends barely chasing a toy. Mm. I'm like, That's I'm like Basley. Why is Basley chasing a toy? I'm like, Rory, the world can see your dog chasing a toy. Okay. But there's hoes in my close friends. It's oh, very calculated. Okay. So you want they may feel see? like they don't know that there's 85 people in my close yeah, friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They don't know. They have no idea. <laughs> to them, I could just be only Us. five. Yeah, it could just be like, oh, you and my done. mom. Yeah. So yeah, it's a very calculated post. Okay. As you see, there is Basley content yes. for the world to see. That's like my only fans for Basley. Gotcha. Like you gotta be in the close friends to really get to see her in those vulnerable yeah. positions. Or me in the bath. Yeah. <laughs> God, please no. Don't ever post that. But okay, I got you. So you made the Irish stew. You soaked. You had a mm. great time. You had a uh, Adele playing. I put I put one person into my close friends. Okay, made it look like you know it was like life thing. is really beautiful. Absolutely got you. Angled the camera because who knows there could be another person in the tub. Right. Maybe you just don't see it. Right. You got to leave some okay. some thought for okay. them thinking maybe did he did he replace me? Ah uh, yes. Try to get him jealous a little bit. Mm. Okay, I got you. So you had Adele playing. Oh, yeah. And um. What did you think? Like, did, it, did, did the fact that you were taking a soak, did you hear the music differently? Were you able to receive the melodies and the harmonies a little differently? I did. I think I felt like the album was written in a bathtub. Okay. She wrote that Possibly. while she was soaking and reflecting. Possibly. Yes, I could see that. Prob- so, Rich, no, I can't see that, Rich. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Rich, my God, no, I, I can't see Adele soaking in the tub. Go ahead, Rory. I think maybe Rich at some point did the close friends move when maybe they were having a fight mm-hmm. and Adele saw it and that kind of inspired at least three or four of these records. Okay. But okay. no, jokes aside, the album is really good. It's, yeah. it's very good. I didn't get a chance to listen to it yet. I've seen uh, all the women posting about it, um, but I am going to check it out while I'm traveling this week. That's, to me, yeah. that's the best time to listen to music while you're traveling, road trip. Mm. 
like I think you you hear music differently. Um, you receive it differently. It's not too much going on that's distracting you. So, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna check it out. Well, you sicker than me then. What traveling and listening to music? You think that's sicker could, than listen, soaking listening and to Irish stew? Listening to Adele in the bathtub makes way more sense than saying. Hey, bros, let's go on a, a, a road trip and throw on the Adele album. Whoa, I didn't say it was going to be bros. I didn't, I didn't say it was going to be me you by be, myself. be crying on 95? Fa- you're traveling to see family, yeah. Like, sometimes you got to cry while you're driving down the turnpike. That's, that's dangerous. No, it's not. You just got to blink 100 times real quick and then, you know, wash the tears away, open the window. But yeah, that's, the, that's to me, that's the best time listening to music. Have Flying you ever cried over a woman? Over what? Have you ever cried over a woman? Cried over a woman? Mm-hmm. No. Cried? No. You're cool. I don't know. Cried? Like, you've actually cried? Like, tears? I don't think I've had actually real tears. Yeah, I'm about to say, I can't see you doing it. No. See, see, Rory, we're more alike than you want to give us credit for, bro. You be trying to make it seem like my shit is crazy for not Mm -hmm. getting super emotional about women. You, you don't get upset. You'll be hurt. But you're not crying. Tears are not streaming down your face. No, I go into sociopath mode. I get numb and Uh, just don't say shit. That's your thing. Yeah. What mode do I go into? I get numb, but I don't. I don't. I wouldn't say sociopath. I just, I get, I isolate myself mm-hmm. because I feel like I don't want to, I don't want that energy to transfer to the wrong person if I, you know, around the wrong people. And it's like, damn, that's not even meant for you. Yeah. I'm going through something else, dealing with something else. And now some of that energy hits you. Like, mm-hmm. so I, I isolate myself until that moment has passed. And then I'm back to being social and, and chilling with the, with the, with the crew. And that takes what, like an hour for you? 45. <laughs> <laughs> You know what I mean? 40, 45 minutes. Uh, you know, once I discover a new Harlan on Instagram, I'm, I'm of back. Of course, yeah. yeah. I'm back. New money bags. Don't worry about it. I don't want to see you, your heart get crushed, but I do want you to kind of have that experience in a relationship. Of uh, dealing with, like, what, uh, heartache? Yeah. It gives you new perspective on things. Oh, no, absolutely. I mean, but you do, I, I, I don't even think you have to be in a relationship. Like, I'm weird. I don't even have to be in a relationship to have heartache. Okay. Like, if I if I meet oh, a so woman... You, you be loving these bitches. Not loving them, but I like them a lot. Like, <laughs> I like them almost right, right there to the Fucking point of love. sucker for love. Yeah, yeah. I'm not, nah, not really, but it's like, <laughs> y'all like her, but it's, it's um, sometimes you find a girl that you like and, and liking her and then getting to know her, you start to learn things about her that you're like, oh man, mm. why are you? Like, yeah. that type of shit hurts me. Did you see a meme and Randa sent it to her and realized you, she's not your meme friend anymore? No, but, that sucks when you can't, like, when y'all are fighting or about to break up or broken up. Mm-hmm. Like, you got a stash of memes that you saw all day that you was ready to get the clip off. You're like, damn. I can't, yeah. even, I can't even send that you this, this TikTok. That, yeah, that's a real thing because on Instagram, like, once I see that women are, like, in relationships, like, really happy. You want to follow them? No. Oh. I, no, I don't go that far. I do. But I make sure that I don't, I don't, I don't post any, uh, I don't drop any money bags on their pics no more. Oh, how noble of you. Yeah, because well, I've had I've had recent situations where the guys have told me they feel away about that, mm-hmm. and I'm like, well, damn, I didn't know that that was disrespectful. Like, no, you're very honorable. Yeah, I didn't know that was just dis- <laughs> dis- considered money bags is disrespectful. Like, if mm-hmm. it's hard eyes, that's different. Mm-hmm. But money bags, so it's like once I see that, it's like, all right, you know, she got a boyfriend now, so it's like just keep it moving. Just gonna stay out, the, stay out the DMs. Not the DMs, because I, I, I rarely jump in the DM, and I don't even. It's not even a DM. I respond to stories. I don't. That's just, a DM. It's a DM. You tried to talk to her. By responding to a story? Mm-hmm. Y'all used to talk. Or, or you tried. Okay. I guess that's where we at in the world with it now. That's, I, I, I'm with you. You give like a LOL? You give a real response? It's co- some, you know what I hate doing? The surveys. <laughs> I hate... I mean, that's when you really feeling somebody. But she be like, short hair or long? You be like, short. Short. <laughs> it's like, I'm corny. Why did I just... <laughs> <laughs> you answer the survey yeah. and then go into the DMs to explain your answer a little bit more. Yeah, like that's corny, man. I be doing that sometimes. I gotta stop that shit, man. That's that not sometimes. corny, man. It is corny. Why? You can't like a survey. Of course you can. You can't answer a survey, Rory. You cannot answer from a girl that you think is hot. Yeah. No, man. Don't. She's do that. giving the opportunity. For, finally, I get to give her some you know feedback. I mean? Nah, you gotta stand how great your, she nah, looks. Nah, nah. Fuck that. Because <laughs> I want to. You know what I be want to do? I be wanting to find out what the common answer is mm. and then shit on that be like yo they bugging they don't know what they talking about but there's no way to see that I suppose you know what I'm saying but nah you can't answer service fellas don't answer service don't listen to Rory you can't do that do you think Tevin Campbell can we talk is considered street harassment could he get that off in 2021 N- no I would say now no that's harassment now I feel like Chris Brown in the yo video that was kind of street harassment too that was definitely street harassment but it's only are we gonna have a real conversation here 
and edit. If we need to edit, let's edit <laughs> like now so you don't forget anything that goes out. He was sipping a little bit, a lot of bit. Tevin, he was a child. He was 15. <laughs> he went, that's why he ain't good. <laughs> he was 15. <laughs> And he didn't even like women. Quincy was sick. (laughs) 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 Tevin was sick. He was sick. Yo, you was trying to talk to this girl. You don't even like girls. (laughs) (laughs) Tevin Campbell was sick. He was in the booth like, Quince, there's something I should let you know. (laughs) Yo, Tevin Campbell was sick. Great vocalist. One of the greatest vocalists we've ever had in our culture. But Tevin, you was sick for that, man. You a sick guy, man. That's hysterical. That's hilarious, actually. Are we leaving any of that? Yeah, leave it all. You sure? We we don't think that you actually think you should harass women to find out if they like you. No, no. But but again, it's only harass, and it's tough, man. Because perfect example. Last night, uh, we was at the show, and um, a friend of mine's. I'm not gonna say a name, but friend of ours Mm -hmm. came up to me and was like, "Oh, Ma, you didn't bring no girl with you. This is the perfect date night." Uh, uh, uh. Yeah, and I'm like, why would I bring a girl with me to Tiana Taylor's show? I mean, because they're all gonna want you when you get there. She was like, "What do you mean?" I said, "Look around. It's 2,700 women in here, mm. but they are there to see Tiana. They're not there to see Mo." Cool, that's fine. But it's like I'm not bringing a woman with me. Like, well, did you find one that you liked there? No, and I wasn't going there to find a woman. Like, I'm. It's, I'm not saying that either. But it's kind of like. I just thought it was weird, like, to ask me why didn't I bring a woman to a Tiana Taylor show? Is Bobby Valentino slow down street harassment? Um, he was in the again, video was legitimately it, following a woman down the street saying it, slow down. Yeah, but it's that only, pretty that pretty brown round thing or whatever the fuck he was saying. <laughs> <laughs> like that's yo slow down so I can see your hey, ass, ma. <laughs> hey, hey, but look, it's only harassment. Like I said, if she's not mm-hmm. feeling you. And you don't know if she's not feeling you Unless. until you harass. But you got to ease into the, I want to see your round brown ass. You got to ease into that one. Yeah. You can say, hey, maybe slow down. And if she doesn't slow down, shut the fuck up. Yeah, no, I get it. I get it. I mean, all jokes aside, like, you definitely we, shouldn't harass one. Of we, course we, not. We're we totally not. just joking about that. But um, that's the interesting thing. And I think we need to have a woman on here to talk about that. Like, Where's, what, where's the fun in that? Because it's no, I think, <laughs> I think we can have a lot of fun with it because it's like, yo, what is how do how does a guy know if like he's at the point and talk or trying to talk to you where you're like, okay, stop talking to me. Unless like nowadays some women straight out say it like yo, leave me alone. For sure. Once a woman says leave me alone, fellas, should. leave her alone. But if a woman doesn't, you can still kind of be annoying her. But you know, Absolutely. for whatever reason, women have been through things with, you know, corny dudes is they get disrespectful if the woman is not interested, and, and they they've been harmed when they yeah that, reject that, those are like a, those those are the thing. type of dudes that you know I wish we could just press a button and just like get rid of all of those type of clowns, but you really don't know because again now how do you even meet a woman like I don't talk I think I spoke about this before I don't even approach women on the street mm. I could see a beautiful woman and I wouldn't even approach her because I feel like again she's gorgeous beautiful whatever. She's walking. I'm pretty sure hundreds of men have tried to talk to this young lady today. And she probably is on her way to go do something. I yeah. doubt she's just going for a stroll looking yeah, for like men. She's, she's busy. <laughs> she's going to work. She's coming from work. Wherever she's going, she's minding her business going throughout her day. So it's hard because, you know, you see a woman and you're attracted. So you're like, damn, like, mm. I would like to get to know this woman. Like, she's attractive. You know, she looks like she has her shit together. She looks nice. She has, she's, she looks like she's walking with a purpose. She's going somewhere or coming from somewhere. You kind of just want to. Can we talk for a minute? I just want to know your name. Interested. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's tough because, again, you don't know what's considered, you know, too much now as far as conversation. Like, you might be annoying her. You might be, you know, getting on her nerves and shit like that. And you don't, you don't ever want to do that. I don't ever want to feel I like just, I'm getting on anybody's nerves. I guess we got to understand that not every place in the world is meant for you to meet and talk to a woman. Absolutely. It's like, there's places where you just got to be like, well, this is just not the time or place to try to talk i just gotta let this one go yeah i mean the last time i met like a woman publicly and like we actually started like kicking it and like Mm. having a conversation it still was through me knowing someone she was with yeah you understand what i'm saying like Mm -hmm. we were all kind of just in the same spot and then she ended up knowing somebody i was with but that was like the last time like i don't I, i just don't you can say hello the friend referral mutual friend thing will definitely help you skip some steps oh that's the greatest shit in the world 
And there's nothing better than hanging out with a girl. Or not not with a girl, but like hanging out somewhere and it's a girl that, that you're attracted to that's there. And then the next day your homegirl hits you like, yo, my friend was feeling you. She just mm. wants you. That's the greatest shit in the oh, world. Oh, for sure. This, that, that feeling right there is like undefeated because you're like, damn, I don't even know if I was going to ever see her again. Mm-hmm. Come to find out she was feeling you the same way you feeling her. You looked ill because you wasn't thirsty. The Mad greatest. Calm. That's the like, greatest win. That's the greatest victory in the world right there. Oh, he's so easy to be around. Yeah. <laughs> Until they get to know you. Oh, yeah. Then, yeah. You, then you realize, oh, this was just you. a facade. Oh, absolutely. That was my representative. <laughs> I'm, I'm very difficult yeah, to Yeah, that around. was my representative you met that night. Yeah. This give is it, the real me. Give it a month. Yeah. You'll be irritated. I actually don't like you like that. I've never seen, even with, I have to know people that do the street harassment cat call shit. I've That's legitimately, crazy to me that I've legitimately that. never seen it work. No, like why it's, it's never worked. Dead? It's never worked. But usually people, when they approach women with the, the same thing, you know, the fucking definition of insanity is doing the same thing, mm-hmm. expecting different results. That's since I've never seen it work. When has a woman ever respond to a cat call like, oh, hey. It's never worked. The, 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 the success rate on that is, is very low. Never seen it. I've never even seen like a respectful cat call work. Like, hey, you look very beautiful today. Would, would you like to talk? I've never <laughs> seen that work. That doesn't work either. No. That's what I'm saying. So it's, it's, it's very rare that it works, number one. It's stupid if you do it and then she doesn't want to talk to you and you start cursing out. I've seen that a lot. That's I'm just, just like, so corny. That's the, because now she doesn't, it's not interesting. She's a bitch. Like, that's just stupid. But The, um, the arrogance of, of the smile police is always funny to me, too. Yeah. If smile. Shorty's not smiling, you think you're going to be the, the, you're the <laughs> you're one? Not the, I promise you, <laughs> you are not the guy that's going to make this young lady smile. She like, didn't walk shut out the, the house up. upset and then saw your face and was hey, like, oh, smile. Thank the, God. The day has changed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad I bumped into you on this corner. Like, you are the reason that I'm going to smile today. I will say it happened to me at our, at our live show when we were taking pictures afterwards. Mm-hmm. And I, of course, have never told a woman to smile because that's corny. Yeah. But I've heard women say how often that happens to them and how it makes them feel. Mm-hmm. And I don't know how to smile in pictures. I don't know what to do in pictures. I always look terrible. Mm-hmm. This woman that I was taking a, a photo with said, can you smile? And I was like, oh, she oh that didn't smile. feel good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, who the yeah. fuck is you? Yeah, like, what do you mean can I smile? Like, I don't, I don't want to smile. Yeah, what the fuck? Yeah, that's So I get it. I, got a I like women of- like that, though. A lot of our women listeners, like, mm-hmm. they're like that. Like, oh, I think like- they know so much about us. Or yes. they think they know so much about us when they finally meet us. It's just like, smile or give me a hug or... I feel like most of our women listeners definitely have a lot of older brothers. They're, sure. they're that type of girl. For sure. Or they have uh, guys that they introduce. Because we met a lot of women like that on, on, at, in LA I did. I met like four women where they said they introduced... No, the guy that they were dating introduced them to the show. Mm-hmm. Now they're no longer with the guy, but they still Ooh. watch the show. I might feel the way if I, if I was that guy. Why would you? I, I'm one of those guys that don't. If I introduce you to a restaurant and we break up, don't you ever go to that restaurant again? Valid. I'm with you on that. So now, nah, if I introduce you to the podcast, mm-hmm. you can't go to a live show. This is my. Sp- when we break up, we have to split the town in half. Okay. Rory and Mall side of town is mine. Okay. You can't go there. I'm with you. If we break up, you can't. You can't be liking the same things that I put you onto, and you can't be putting your new dude onto that. No, that's a rule. Unless, I think that's a rule. Unless she was at the show, just put him and her close friends and posted a photo of the show. Mm. Uh, I'm trying to think outside of uh, Adele. I know Kate Trinata put out a three pack with her Thundercat and uh, Makami, which I thought was cool. Um, that's called uh, Intimidated. And I championed anything Kate Trinata. So I was super excited. I love Kate Trinata. Um, yeah, I didn't, uh, I didn't really get into too, too much new music this weekend. Uh, I know that uh, Ross is coming. Mm-hmm. Not the tenth or the fourth. Yeah, I think. Um, interested to hear. I spoke to Wale about it when we in L- we were in L- in L. A. I asked him, you know, how's it sounding? <clears throat> but he said he didn't hear none of the. Um, he's not sure what Ross is using on this project. Okay. The last time I think he said he sat with Ross and Ross played some music was like five months ago. I think he said so. Um, I'm I'm excited to hear this project. I just hope I like the I like the record he got with Twenty One Savage. I'm oh. not mad at it. I just hope that <clears throat> I'm hoping that Ross doesn't fall into this this uh this 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 thing where a lot of my favorite rappers sometimes seem to fall where they don't they stop pause growing. Mm-hmm. Um, 
And I hope Ross doesn't fall into that because, you know, he's, you know how I feel about Ross, one of my favorite rappers ever, one of my favorite artists ever. But I kind of feel like, you, it, it, you know, the, the music might not be growing anymore. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I don't want, I don't want Ross to get, to get stuck in that box because I think he's so dope of, a, of an MC and a rapper. Um, but either way, I'm going to support it. I love Ross. Uh, to me, he hasn't made a whack project yet. No, I don't think so either. Um, he's, given, he's given away some of the greatest mixtapes that we've had. You know what I mean? A lot of people don't talk about that either when it comes to Ross. A lot of the, the free shit that he's given us. He's given us some projects that I was like, how is he just throwing these records out? Like, it was crazy. Some of the, some of the features he had, I was just like, this is, he just giving this away? Mm-hmm. Think, um, okay. <clears throat> so, yes, yeah, so I just don't want to, um, I just don't want him to fall into that redundant sound. Well, with Ross, like, we always talk about like damn which Ross would like EP and Nas album or EP this person's because mm-hmm. we all know he's a great beat picker mm-hmm. and I feel like because he is in that formula he's so good at is why he does it and I think maybe even though he's one of the best beat pickers and really good at EP and albums mm-hmm. maybe he needs someone else to EP it yeah so he can get out of because he's gonna stay in that formula and it's gonna sound great yeah so it's like what he's gonna sit in the studio and be like we're not putting this out because it's gonna sound good but it's gonna probably be similar to mm-hmm what the other albums were. I think someone else needs to sit with Ross and be like, yo, you just focus on rapping. Right. Like, I know how your EP brain works where you're focusing on beats and features. Mm-hmm. Like, Ross, just go rap. And it's, um, you know, it's not a knock because naturally you're going to have your sound. Yeah. And you're going to sound like yourself. But the music can still grow. Mm. The content can still grow. Um... You know, and I just don't want. I just, I just hope that with this this new project, I hope that Ross is changing his sound, changing his content, because again, I, you know, he's he's one of those artists that can do that, and he has a lot going on in his personal life to where his content can change, and the things that he's telling us and giving us can change. So I'm excited though. You know, it's another Ross project. Um, I, I didn't think we were gonna get a Ross album this year, so this mm. was this was oh, dope to find out that this was coming. Um, It'd be cool if he did like some weird producer collab album, like the, two, the two chains. I always said that him and Justice League should lock in for a whole project. But I feel like you get more of the same. Like we get what that we same love sound. already. Like yeah. when Two Chains and Static Selected announced they was working together, and I heard some Different. of the music is fucking right. incredible. Like right. Chains, you wouldn't expect that, and mm-hmm. it sounds so good because of that. Like yeah. if Ross got with like a Mad Lib or some really weird shit, I would like to hear Ross with like more Bink. Ross I would like to hear uh, Ross and Ninth Wonder yeah, would be great. I would like to hear him with Ninth Wonder. Uh, just some left shit where it's like you lock in with one producer that you typically wouldn't mm-hmm. be with and wouldn't be a typical sound. Because of course, a Ross Justice League album would be incredible. But oh yeah, but we got that. <laughs> yeah, we have a bunch we of. No, we know what they can do together. But you know, it's yeah, it's just I just I'm just hoping that with this project, the content changes a little bit. Yeah, with Ross. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah. I mean, it's it's Ross, so <clears throat> I'll be clicking it. Um, but yeah, I think that was it as far as like major releases um, over the weekend. But shows, what else you been watching? Uh, BMF uh, season finale. Watched it. Um, not mad at the, the, the season finale. Is it better than not, The Wire? Not even close. <laughs> Just ask not, me, not even close. You told uh, me Seinfeld was better than The Wire. I was like, what? It's not even the same I never, category. Never said <laughs> that. Everything, everything is better than yo, The Wire. Look, yo, see the narratives you throw out there about me? Oh, wow. Um, no, BMF was good. I, he was I'm, comparing I, Issa to Marlo. And I was, I was like, what no, the fuck? See, see this, is, this is why people think I'm crazy because you say shit like this. Um, yeah, I like BMF. I think the first season was, uh, was good. I think they did a good job. Uh, I was surprised. I didn't think it was going to be as good as it was. Mm. A um, couple episodes were kind of shaky. It kind of started getting a little too like, all right, man, what's going on? But um, I think that overall they did a really good job. They did a really good job. Shout out to Tasha Smith, who directed it. Um, shout out to Fit, the executive producer, uh, all of the actors. I think they, they did a really good job. I'm, I'm not, I'm not mad at the first season. I'm, they, I'm, I'm, they, I'm excited to see what season two is going to do. Were they renewed for season two already? I would have to. I would have to think so. Okay. Yeah. I, would, I mean, I think everybody was watching that. I think they would have to be uh, greenlit for season two already. Yeah, for sure. Who um, who's gonna play Jeezy if it's in season two? It'll probably be season three when Jeezy shows up. I was thinking about that because all the people that are attached to BMF and such a big part of their story. That's why BMF is interesting because it wasn't that long ago. Mm-hmm. Like everyone's still around yeah. and it was yeah. still part of the culture of the artists that are still relevant. Mm-hmm. Like 
Fab has to be in it somehow. Jeezy has to be in it somehow. I thought that the Eminem appearance of him playing White Boy Rick was hilarious. Uh, that shit was just like the most. Like I get it, Eminem, Detroit. I get it. I liked it. But come on, I thought man. It was, I thought it was funny. <laughs> nah, man. We come on, man. You thought when he said it Who was, was that he said White Boy Rick, you thought he'd be like, no, nah, I was Eminem. <laughs> But did you see Eminem's face though? <laughs> like Eminem always has this look on his face where it's like, it's like he heard somebody was coming to get him. <laughs> like it's like like so he just always has this look in his eyes where he's just like, just you could tell he's looking at everything. Yeah, and it was just like, that's not Eminem. He looked like Kevin Spacey. Like that wig he had. The on, wig was, was the wig was interesting. I was like, is that Kevin Spacey? Like who is that? That's not White Boy Rick, man. Like, have you ever seen oh. pictures of White Boy Rick? He don't look shit. His hair looked nuts, too, though. White Boy Rick's yeah, hair but, looked nuts. Oh, uh, but that was just, yo, seeing Eminem like that was just hilarious, bro. But it was a great season, man. I think they did a good job, man. I'm <laughs> I'm definitely looking forward to season two of that. And shout out to Cash, though. She did a great job in her role as well. I think she has a future in acting for sure. Yeah. She did a really, really good job. No, I like it. The Lamar character, he's definitely the star of season one, though. Oh, yeah. Yeah, his for character sure. was absolutely uh, crazy. And then... <laughs> See, I don't want to give because you didn't see it, but it's I just, didn't see the finale yet. I'm, not, I'm it's almost just there. Certain I mean, I know, I know they all get arrested at the end, so you don't have to. <laughs> you know how the story ends. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, no, but it's it's just certain shit that happened where, and I don't want to spoil it for you, but it's just not. It that would not happen. Like that, it just would that that would not happen. That's all mm. I'm gonna say. Like, and it's dealing with the relationship with homeboy and, and the girl. The way that ended, it would not happen like that. Like, trust me, I know plenty. Of dudes that was in a situation where the girl was a snitch and all, and it didn't happen like that. So it's just like, I don't know, but whatever, man. It, it, it was it was a good season though. It was yeah. a good season for sure. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm I'm excited to finish it up. I still I, I fell off with Raising Canaan. I gotta catch up on that. Too. Yeah, I heard the new one is out. Okay. Um, no, not Raising Canaan. Uh, oh, the, out. yeah, the Power, Power Book, Book Seventeen. Yeah, the, the new. I didn't the I didn't start it yet. Week. Narcos Mexico. The new season is mm -hmm. out. I watched um the first episode. I mean, at this point that. That's just in neutral. They just they know what they're doing with that. This is for sure. Be, I could tell it's gonna be another dope season of that. Um, also, insecure, are you insecure. Watching? Yes, I'm, I'm. I didn't watch uh, last night's episode because I fell asleep, but I am. I am pretty much caught up. I, I like the way it's, it's wrapping up. Yeah, and ending. I like it, but it's just like, damn, this shit is like really. You can see it, like you could tell that it's over, like it's coming yeah. to an end. Like you can kind of see that. Um, but shout out to uh, Issa Rae and, and the whole Insecure brand. Uh, I was watching Curb. Did you see Curb? In the I do. New episode. Mm. Larry, yo, his his humor, man. It's, I think that's just the older man thing. Yeah, but I feel like he's been that way for quite since he was time. sixteen. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, like Kirby enthusiasm is like they were able to really finish the jokes in Seinfeld because yeah. it didn't have to be sitcommy. It didn't have mm -hmm. to be network TV. Like mm -hmm. it could finally get into the real brain of Larry David, right? Which I identify with more and more. As the days go, as you get older, yeah, oh for sure, yeah. It was, it was, it was some things in there where I was like, "Holy shit!" Like this is part of getting old. I love in every episode, or every season of Curb, like all <laughs> Curb is kind of like oh, love and hip hop in the sense you know, love and hip hop. All they do is go talk, then they go get drinks, mm -hmm. then they talk, and then they go get drinks, and then they play basketball, and then shoot they, free throws with each other. Then they, by the way, then they go get drinks. Niggas <laughs> have never met up to just shoot free throws with each other. That just that doesn't happen. Yo, it's just shit that don't be happening for real, man. When Peter Guns and, and Saigon and Rich Dollars was just hooping on that that one court when you come out of the Holland Tunnel it's on Sixth just, Avenue and Canal, no one's ever played ball at that court. Ever. That court is they empty didn't even every play day. ball. They were just shooting free throws, bro. Like who shoots was, who shoots hoops on Canal? Who practices free throws? Like, what nigga that plays street ball be like? Yo, I'm gonna go get a 500 free throw in the park. <laughs> Niggas is coming like, fam, we need that court. You got to take that shit somewhere else. You're not oh shooting, practicing God. free throws here. It's just shit oh that just God. does not happen that they be trying to put in these shows. I'm like, bro, that's not real. That does not happen like that. But whatever, it's all oh. for TV, I guess. And I feel like Curb. All they do is have dinner parties, and that's how they digest every weird thing in society. Well, that's an older, I think that's an older person thing. Yeah. Because right? I know a lot of older people that, they're like, oh, yeah, we're going to a dinner party this week. I'm like, that, is that like the older brunch? You of just course. Say dinner party? Yeah. Okay. But you have to have older friends that know how to cook. That's, that's very true. That, now, that's very true. But the fact that- You can't that have a dinner party and don't know how to cook. He, anytime the dinner party scene comes up in almost every fucking episode, I'm like, all right, how is, can he not beat this into a dead horse? It's funny every single time. Mm -hmm. 
that entire show is so simple yet so complex. Love it. Love Curb, man. I'm all caught up on that. Um, and also in Insecure, not this episode that just came out, the one before it. When they got into like Kelly finding herself in the spiritual journey mm-hmm. and how fucking annoying those people can be sometimes. Mm-hmm. Like the entire show, it's like, yo, shut the fuck up about how you found yourself. Right. Like, and then you <laughs> find the other person at the party that found yeah. themselves and now it's two annoying people. It's a connection. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, nah, I get what you're saying. Leave your chakras over there. Like, I, I think that that, I think Kelly, I think she has a, her character has a spinoff ability. Oh, for sure. I don't know if spinoff ability is a word, but it is now. I think she has spinoff ability. I like, mean, her, her as character an actress. Is that, yeah, her character is that funny. I think that they can create a, a show around just her character. Absolutely. No, she's she's hysterical. Yeah. And come on, man. Give Lawrence some some slack here. Why? I mean, if he's in the other city trying to make money for the kid, mm-hmm. he's like not supposed to enjoy himself and fuck bitches and drink and celebrate. Like, I what's think- he supposed to do? He's working. Wants to go home. He's mm-hmm. not with Shorty. Like, why is everyone like, his piece of shit. Look at him having a blast while, his, <laughs> while the single mother's in LA. I'm like, well, dog, he's up there making money. He can't enjoy right. himself. He got to be miserable over there too. He can't release his loins. <laughs> his women don't like when you have fun, man. They give Lawrence way too much shit on I think, show. I think at the end of it, I think at the end of uh, this Insecure uh, series, I think that people are going to love Lawrence. I think this, the last episode is going to be like, he did it right. He mm. got it right. Like, you know what I mean? I just, mm. I just, I just see it going that way. I'm sorry. He came, he came all the way from Best Buy. He got yeah. it out the Best Buy mud. He made it all the way to to fucking Silicon Valley. Whatever the fuck he's doing now. And the Best Buy mud is not easy mud. Yeah, right? that's hey, like some tough mud. For sure. Yeah. He went from geek squads of fucking making six figures. Right. Of course he's gonna fuck some bitches <laughs> after work. It has to happen. <laughs> like that's part of it. Like I make six figures now. Pussy Wait. is somewhere in this motherfucking negotiation. Trust and believe that. And I mean. Of course he wants to show up for the bigger moments. <laughs> People take like the common sense out of shit. Like, all right, but bet, that's part if I have of to it, work, man. let me make sure I could go for the bigger moments. That's part of it. Like we don't, we don't, we lose sight of that and watching a lot of these shows. Like, and that's why I love when shows get it right mm. because they, they, they cover all the bases of it wouldn't happen like that. It would happen like this. Yeah. This is more realistic. Insecure is, is great with the realistic shit because Issa, she, Issa knows. <laughs> she course. knows how shit is going to go. That's not how it happens. It happens like this. And that's why Insecure is one of our favorite shows. Because they just get it right. They understand our culture. For sure. Um, try to think if there's anything else. Uh, we, we won't be back on Friday. We, no. we are taking a, a Indigenous People's Day break. Yes. Um, but we will be back next week. Uh, merch will be available soon. Some shit here. Yeah, some shit. <laughs> Yo, you hear Rory? It's so you got some shit, shit if you're watching the video. I gave uh I gave Tiana one of the hoodies last night Dope. that I had. I didn't have uh I didn't bring back much from LA, but I'm gonna have them uh send some stuff out so we can start gifting some of our friends some of our merch. But Tiana loved it. She was for mad sure. that I didn't have uh any more for her, but we'll be sure to get our friends and family some merch. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and it'll be online. Else, it'll be available online because I know, pe- again, people keep asking, so it's coming. Um, is there any, any other updates? We don't have Damaris here. Uh, she's feeling under the weather, and she usually gives us the yeah. updates that we need. Shout out to the, oh, I did want to say, uh, what's the uh, what's the bitch-ass nigga name, the football player? Oh, I, I forgot his name. That's, yo. What's his name? I don't I don't know his name. I can't even, I don't even call him a bitch-ass nigga. He's a, he's a fucking, he's a clown. And um, if it's true that his friends were, were hiding him, Y'all That's some clown too. shit too. <laughs> Y'all clowns too. Put them, put them all in us on uh, the same clown Zach bus. Stacey. Zach Stacy, Zach Stacy, you're a fucking clown. That um, shit was. Cr- I don't, terrible. I don't know, I don't know where you from. Uh, I don't know, you know, the type of the upbringing that you had. I don't know the type of friends that are around you, but um, you're a clown. There's never no, and I'm here seeing things online saying that uh, his his baby mother pulled a gun on him or something like that. Um, and if that's the case, you know, she was wrong for that. But uh, if 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 she no longer has the gun in her hand, just call the police. Like if you yeah. were able to get the gun away from her, like all that extra shit, you slamming her, your your daughter uh sitting right there on the couch, knocking over your baby. Yeah, it's it's like you you're a clown, you're a clown. Um, and I hope that you know somebody, some some real men, because that's the problem out here. It's not a lot of real men walking around. Um, I hope some real men run down on you. I hope that she has a family full of real men. And they find you and they beat the brakes off your bitch ass. Well, I believe he was caught and was charged. 
So as he should be, like he's, that. Dude, he, like what even you if you PC up, even people in PC don't fuck with that type of shit. Yeah, like that's <laughs> just like you. You you a clown. You a clown. Um, I don't know where where it became cool for men to to put put hands on on a woman like that, and you know it's just again it's it's, it's unfortunate to even have to see that. Um, now the baby is traumatized for sure witnessing that. Um, yeah. So so I don't even want to say his name. He's a fucking mm-hmm. clown. And if, if if the other prisoners don't get to him, I know some COs that will. <laughs> yeah, and he's, you know, I, I guess he feel like, you know, a man. Like, you know, that's, that's that insecure shit that, you know, men that put their hands on women. I, I guess he kind of feels like a man now. I just hope some real men run down on you and, and really and really show you what being a man is about. Word. For sure. Um, well, yeah. Shout out to everyone. Uh that's that's been keeping up with us. We will be back. Enjoy your holiday with your family. If you don't enjoy have the family, holiday, eat good, live good, enjoy each other, love each other. Don't drink and drive. Um, d- yeah, please don't drink and drive. Uber is 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 readily available with the with the fare hikes. Pay the fare hike. Don't ask any political questions to your family members. No, ask all. Ask them all. If you're white, let's have an uncomfortable. <laughs> I'll tell you what. We are here to get to the uncomfortable. We approach the uncomfortable. We approach the awkward and we face it. You know what I'm saying? And I want families to have. Awkward conversations. This, 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 this. I don't want to say Thanksgiving. I can't. It's so programmed. Well, we got to come up with a new word. Uh, a day to give thanks. Uh, a day, to, <laughs> a day to eat. Yeah. So on the day to eat together as a family, which should be every day, but of course society doesn't make it that way. Uh, yeah. Have the uncomfortable conversations. I was, I was talking. Remember when uh, the Meek Championships album came out and What's Free with Hove is on there and Hove has the, the line. Uh, don't tell me, t- Happy Thanksgiving sounds like a massacre to me or whatever the bar mm-hmm. was guru guru called me when it came out and was like dog we recorded that shortly after thanksgiving and the last text i sent him before he, he texted to link for the it's studio happy was happy thanksgiving he was talking about guru <laughs> <laughs> he threw a shot at his he was engineer like, Damn, man imagine I, throwing a shot at the nigga that's like recording <laughs> <laughs> about a, a, a nice gesture yeah. happy thanksgiving bro yeah man it's just yeah but we got to find a different word i know uh we're trying to move forward in our, our culture and as a society and make things right um so they're calling it native american heritage day indigenous indigenous day, day something like that i don't know yeah i don't i don't know what they're doing but you know give thanks every day you should give thanks anyway but um yeah have fun with the family have the uncomfortable conversations man fuck it that's the only way we're we gonna have progress anyway have the uncomfortable conversations but most importantly love and respect each other um be safe and um Yeah, man, we'll see y'all when we get back. Um, Until then, peace and love.